Hello, the day first here. How's it going? While researching something for another video, I think I've uncovered the mechanism behind TMs, HMs, and moves in the Pokemon world. Previously, after looking into theories, I thought TM stored digital information and that the Pokemon world was kind of a digital one, but now I believe they contain genetic code. As we all know, Pokemon Genetics uses DNA, the same way that people and animals in our world do. And a little late to the party, I know, I just found out that Pokemon can inherit moves from their parents during breeding. Therefore, moves are genetic. Most likely, each move is encoded by its own unique gene. These genes can then be sequenced and that code put on a disc. That code can then simply be inserted into the genomes of every single cell inside of a Pokemon and boom, it's a part of that Pokemon forever. The Pokemon world has technology that can instantly sequence the entire genomes of Pokemon and produce clones of them in seconds. So biotech like this isn't all that far-fetched and we're already halfway there ourselves. Genes can be switched off or on, repressed or activated. They say we share 98.8% of our genes with chimps and it's which genes are activated when, where, and in what amounts that makes us different. Assuming that four moves is some kind of biological limit, maybe only four of these move genes can be expressed at one time, all the other move genes are being repressed. TMs can artificially and selectively repress the move genes you want the Pokemon to forget and add the new gene and any genes for potentially necessary proteins like cofactors or transcription factors needed for the expression of its new move gene. Then factoring in any other biological limits like the inability to produce electricity or fire because they lack the necessary organs, you get the TM system. HMs seem to be more like inherent traits that the Pokemon already possesses rather than new moves. So I'm guessing HMs work a little bit differently and they're a lot simpler to explain. And the HM simply allows them to use it as a move during battle or enhances that innate ability in some way. Now I'm going to go into some possible science for moves learned by level up. When a Pokemon reaches a certain level, one where it can learn a new move, a chemical signal unique to the move it's trying to learn is released. This opens up the chromatin in every cell exposing the DNA while also stimulating the release of molecules that repress and activate the expression of move genes. Based on the method the daycare uses, in the wild, or at least without a trainer present, the Pokemon always seem to learn the new move, activating the expression of that gene. While a Pokemon knows less than four moves, a constant chemical signal is released that stops repressor molecules being released. However, once the Pokemon has four moves, that signal stops, meaning that repressors can be dispersed. So, if a wild Pokemon has less than four moves, only the activated molecules are released and the gene for the new move is activated. If the Pokemon already has four moves, the repressor molecules are released and the first move is repressed and its expression stopped. These activated molecules are specific to the move gene the Pokemon is trying to learn. They stimulate the expression of that gene, allowing the Pokemon to use that move. When a trainer is present, we directly affect which genes are expressed. We know which moves are trying to be learnt because research has been done and the Pokedex can tell us. Then we can actively choose whether the Pokemon learns a new move or not, and which one is forgotten. Realistically, this would need to be done with another piece of tech or by injecting chemicals or specific gene activator or repressor molecules into the Pokemon. This is also how Move Tutor works. They can help a Pokemon learn new moves or remember old ones by artificially activating those genes while repressing another one. I'm going to go into kind of a little bit more in depth about what Pokemon have what move genes and stuff in another video. Also, you may have realized that terms like activator and repressor molecules are kind of vague, but I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And there's a lot of information I would need if I was to go in any further that just isn't available. Like gene regulation in eukaryotic cells is crazy complicated and I just don't want to go into it. I think it would just be too much and it's not worth it. Because I'm still trying to keep this as easy for anyone and everyone to understand as I possibly can. So what did you think? Did you understand any of that or was it just too complicated, too much? Was it boring? I don't know. I just find biology kind of interesting. You might not. Anyway, um, yeah, give me some feedback if you liked it. I will continue with the videos I have planned anyway, but I might do some more afterwards. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Love you all. With all that said, 